Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Our attire affects a lot of things, how people see us. Most of the time, your worth is seen in your attire, but we want to give you an example. Ezekiel 6. We want to give you an example on how an Israelite sister should dress. Because sometimes we might hear the term modesty, and a lot of us may not know. I didn't know what modest was until I was given an example. The example is different from the world than it is from the actual Bible. We're going to give you the biblical example on how our sisters should dress, all right? Go ahead and read. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 10. I clothe thee also with broided work and shod thee with badger skin. Read that again. I clothe thee also with broided work and shod thee with badger skin. So the most high clothed our brothers and our sisters with broided work, intricate designs. Versace ain't had nothing on our clothes Bring back then. No. Fendi, Gucci, and Prada ain't had nothing on the clothes that we used to wear back then. No. And have you ever have you ever wore badger skin before? You know how they be wearing minks and chinchillas now? They got that from us. That's not the quote unquote Italian man style. That's our style. They took that from us. Read. No. I clothe thee also with boarded work and shot thee with badger skin. Read. And I girded thee about with fine linen. So we have fine linen on too. The best linens. Silk, cotton, 100% pure. We had the best materials rocking those. Read. And I covered thee with silk. Read. I decked thee also with ornaments. So the most high decked us with jewelry. We had jewelry on back then. You know what I'm saying? So that's a that's an example on how our people used to dress. Keep reading. And I put bracelets upon thy hands. Read. And a chain about thy neck. So we had silver bracelets, gold bracelets on, necklace, chain, the whole thing. Read. And I put a jewel on thy forehead. Read. And earrings in thine ears. Read. So we had earrings, jewels on our forehead. And Read. a beautiful crown upon thy head. So we had a beautiful crown upon our head. We as royalty. And we royalty today, but we don't understand that. We don't know that. That's right. And that's what we out here to do, to show our people our work. Do you understand that the Most High God chose you, chose us, above all the other nations? So what I want to get into, because we're here to teach not only you the commandments, but the young ones as well as the men. All right? You understand that? So what's your name, brother? You said Ricky, Ricky, you ever you believe in the Bible? You ever heard you as an Israelite before? Uh, let me ask you a question. What's your nationality? You see your nationality on this side? All right, thank you. All right. all right, no problem, sis. Judea. So you Judah, all right? So go ahead, give me Deuteronomy 10 and 12. He under, he, so you heard you were an Israelite before. Okay, but this, hearing you an Israelite, life is so much more about that. God requires something to you, Ricky. No. Do you understand that? God requires something more than you just knowing who you are. It comes with a requirement. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. Read. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? So what do the Lord God require of you, Ricky? The same thing he required from us as well. Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. Read. To walk in all his ways. Read. And to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul Read. to keep the commandments. Read that again, because Ricky, I want you to understand. Come closer so you can hear this. I want you to understand what God requires of you. Not society, not your friends, not your family. You know? But the person that created you requires something from you. You got me? Read it again. To keep the commandments. He requires you to keep the commandments. You 
You understand that? He requires you to keep the commandments. And that's what we out here for, to show you the commandments. That's right. Because you may not know the commandments in this Bible. Right. You may not know that. Let's get a commandment. Give me friendships. No, first, give me uh, First Corinthians. Because I see you got your beard already. Did you know that was a commandment? That men must keep their beard? That was a commandment in the Bible, but it's one thing that I, I want to show you that, you that you're not keeping right now. And you may not know that. Read. No. First Corinthians 11, verse 3. Read. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Okay, so understand that in the Bible, the Most High deals with levels. You got the Most High God, Christ, man, then women, and then children after that. It's not an equal, it's not equal, there's That's no right. equality. There's no equality in the right. Bible. We all got an important role, right. don't get me wrong, but the man is not equal to the woman. The woman's not equal to the man. Right. We're not equal to Christ, and Christ is not equal to the Most High. Right. Right. Read it again. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, yep. and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Okay, read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Do you understand what that means, Ricky? Read it again. And I, I'm, yeah, read it again. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Okay, so what we're doing right now is praying and prophesying. Bringing the scriptures out in the Bible, speaking the word of God. We're gonna show you that in the Bible. Everything you gonna hear from us today is coming directly from the scriptures. There, we're not trying to give a private interpretation of God's word. We speak in thus saith the Lord, read. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said it to me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, so Ricky, what's the spirit of prophecy according to that scripture? You want to read it? The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So according to that, what's the spirit of prophecy? The, the testimony of Christ, correct. So the testimony of Christ is the word of God. All these words that you hear coming out the Bible is prophesying. Go back to 1 Corinthians. Read. 1 Corinthians 11 and 4. Every man praying or prophesying. So every man that's hearing this Bible or reading this Bible. Read. Having his head covered. Having his head covered. What does that mean when you have your head covered? Now that, that actually means having your head physically covered. Right now you got a do rag on and the word of God is coming out. So right now that means, read, dishonoreth his head. Right now you're dishonoring Christ because the Bible is coming out and you have your head covered. So you love God, right? You love Jesus, right? So according to the scripture, what must you do? Right, so you got to remove your do-rag while the scriptures are coming out. All right, and keep reading. This scripture, this scripture, hey, all praises. Hey, believe it or not, Ricky, some people will hear that and they'll get mad as hell and walk off. Some people may hear that and they may threaten their lives or whatever. But you got enough guts, you got enough heart, enough discipline to follow God's commandments. That's right. And that wasn't hard, was it? That's right. Now, Sister, this, the next scripture is for you. What's your name, sis? Samantha. Samantha, you know? this scripture, this next scripture is for you. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. So if the word is coming out, Ricky, and a sister has their head uncovered, Samantha, they dishonor their head. So remember, when the scripture's coming out, sister, you got to have your head covered. Ricky, you got to have your head uncovered. Let me give you some more scriptures because you said you know you an Israelite. All right, go ahead and give me uh, Frenches in the Bible. The book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. Bring it out. Speak 
unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation. Oh, read that again. Speak unto the children of Israel. So hold on, Ricky, I want to ask you a question. Now look around at all the men you see in purple and gold. Besides the garments that we have on, what do you notice that we have in common on our clothes? Okay, I'm gonna explain it to you. Keep reading. I'm gonna explain it to you. And beat them that they make them fringes. So fringes, these are fringes. You see them on our garments, you see them on all our shirts. This is a commandment. This is a com everything coming out this Bible telling us to do, we must do. Read. That they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation. So if we got to put fringes on our garments throughout our generations, how long do we have to wear these? So we'll say that again. Exactly. We supposed to be wearing these forever. So if you got children, they supposed to be wearing fringes. You are, your grandparents, your grandkids, your great grandkids, right? But there's a reason why we must wear fringes. Read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So you see, we all got a ribbon of blue. Some of ours light blue, some dark blue, some midnight blue. He wants a ribbon of blue over it. Read. And it shall be for you. Sorry. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. Okay, so Ricky, read that again, because I want you to understand why we wear these, read. That ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. So we wear these so we can remember the commandments. You know, it's just like a like somebody that worked at Target and they go to, they go to work and they got their red shirt and khakis on. They know they can't do something at their job site, because they know they're a representation of their job. That's right. We wear these fringes because we're a representation of God. Right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So when you have, when you got wickedness on your mind, you can look upon them. Oh, thou shalt not kill. Bring it up. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Oh, it's a big booty sister walking down the street. Right. Oh, I'm not supposed to look at, look at her after her lust. Right. That's my sister. You know what I'm saying? So that's what the fringe is for. Right. I got another question for you. Because you know you Israel, what is today? You said what? What must we be doing on the Sabbath day? Resting, what else? Keeping the commandments. Do you know what specific commandments that we must be keeping? Let me ask you, did you buy anything today? Okay, let's get into that. No buying on the Sabbath. Because you understand today is the Sabbath, but first go to Exodus 20 and 8. Because God commanded us to keep the Sabbath holy. You know, but he explains how to keep it holy. Sometimes in the Christian church, they just tell you to keep the Sabbath holy. But they never go into it. Right. And they tell you it's on the wrong day. Right. Read. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy maid servant, nor thy cattle. Okay, so I want you to read that again. Because he said keep the Sabbath holy and then he goes into how you do that. The Most High never tells you something without giving you the instruction right. on how to do it, Rick. Right. So go ahead and read that again. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Agreed. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So six days. So from Sunday all the way until Friday, you got enough time to handle your business and work. You know what I'm saying? From Sunday to Friday, you got enough time to handle your business to work. Read. But the seventh day, but the seventh day. Today is the seventh day, right, Ricky? So today is what? The Sabbath, right? Okay, read. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Read. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy maidservant, nor thy manservant. Okay, so Ricky, what is that saying? On the Sabbath, we shouldn't do any what? 
we shouldn't work. But That's like I good. asked you, and you was honest, you was forthcoming. You had bought the headphones today. Give me the scripture on not buying. Because you understand we not supposed to buy either. Not only are we not supposed to work, we not supposed to buy. Really? Right. Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 31. And if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we will not buy it of them on the Sabbath or the holy day. Read that again. And if any, and if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the Sabbath. So let me give you an example of that. Right now, the people of the land bring their items to sell is family dollar, because that's where you got the headphones from, right? We can't tell them to, we can't tell the owner of Family Dollar to shut down your store, because he's not one of our people. Right. You know what I'm saying? But this instruction is for you. It's for you. It's for all of us. Right. So Family Dollar is open, right? Read. And if the people of the land bring well or any victuals on a Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. So even though Family Dollar is open, what did God tell us not to do? Not to buy it from them. You know what I'm saying? No matter how, what sale they got on, I don't give a damn if it's damn near free. The Most High said not to buy it from them. That is a commandment of the Lord. So on the Sabbath, we must not work. We must not buy or sell. What else what should we not do on the Sabbath? Did you cook today? You didn't? You're not supposed to, so don't cook later on today till the sundown. Give me that in the scriptures. We're not supposed to cook today either. We're not supposed to work, buy, sell, or cook. Read. Exodus. Chapter 16, verse 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye shall bake today, and seize that which ye shall seize, and that which remaineth over lay for you to be kept until the morning. Okay, so I want to explain something to you real quick, and I'm going to have an officer read the scripture again. A lot of our people ask the question, well, if I can't cook on the Sabbath, because the Sabbath, Sabbath is from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, how am I supposed to eat? How am I going to eat? Read that again. The, God is giving you instructions on what you must do. Because it's not saying that you can't eat. It's just saying that prepare your stuff before the day comes. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord had said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. So tomorrow is the rest of the Sabbath. It's going to begin the night, but the rest of the Sabbath is in the morning. Read. Bake that which you shall bake today. So on that sixth day, cook what you're going to cook on that sixth day to be prepared for that seventh day. Read. And see that you will see and boil what you got to boil if you got to boil eggs. You know what I'm saying? If you got to boil vegetables. Read. And that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So, and that's what's left over. You eat leftovers, right? So these are just leftovers that you ain't got to heat up. You know, it's the same thing. All right, you understand that? Okay, so we got, you got to wear your fringes. No buying on the Sabbath, uh, no selling on the Sabbath, no cooking, no working. What else what should we do on the Sabbath? Yep, Leviticus 23. Do you know what else we got to do on the Sabbath, Ricky? Right, keep it holy, but we're going into how to keep it holy. That's right. I got something else for you, because we must gather, gather together on the Sabbath. That's why you see all us brothers out here. We gathering together so we can keep the Sabbath holy. But you must gather together with like-minded people. Read. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 3. Yep, start from one. Verse one, and the Lord spake to Moses saying, so this is the Lord talking. This ain't us just telling you jibber jabber. This is coming from the Bible. Three, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done. But in the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Read that again. Because the Lord said these are holy convocations. 
Do you know what a convocation is? Uh, a convocation is a gathering. That's right. So this book, Leviticus 23, this chapter is all about holy gatherings. All right, a convocation is a gathering. Read. Six days shall work be done, but in the seventh day is the seventh of rest. So today you should be having a holy gathering. The people that you should be gathering with, say what? Okay, good, read. And holy convocation. Read. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So no matter where you at, I, let's say if you're not from America, if you live in somewhere else like in Canada or Mexico, you got to keep the Sabbath if you're an Israelite. If you from That's any of these right. nations right here, look on this sign right here. If you from any of these nations, you should be keeping the Sabbath. Today. That's right. No matter where you at, no matter the condition that you in. But more importantly, the Most High said it is a holy convocation, a holy gathering. So that means the people that you should be gathering with should be doing, should be on the same thing you own. Should not be buying, should not be selling, should not be working. You get that, Ricky? So, on the Sabbath, what should you be doing? Okay, how do we keep the Sabbath holy? So, I got, I'll help you out. No buying, no selling, no working. Uh, what else? And gathering with like-minded people, those that are keeping the commandments. Because remember, I brought that out to you. It's required for you to keep the commandments. So on that day, you should be surrounded with a bunch of people with their beards, with fringes on, and keeping the commandments. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.